Hello everyone, my name is James Church. Thank you for coming to my talk, Fun and Hacking on the Amazon Echo. All right, oops, there we go. So again, my name is James Church. Thank you for coming out to the talk. Uh, I can be reached at any of these social media pages, twitter.com, github, uh, facebook.com, it's all JC Church. Uh, come find me, come follow me on Twitter, I'll follow you back. Uh, this is a special note to Ben the Meek. Thank you for inviting me to speak. He's, he's really great about organizing uh, this uh, conference and finding uh, speakers, finding good speakers and then finding speakers like me. Uh, sorry, to, this is a, an apology to Ben. Sorry that I'm unable to read a schedule. I thought this was a one day, one track con and it's grown since then. So I, I honestly thought I was set up for two o'clock on Saturday when really I was two o'clock on Friday and I still was teaching a class yesterday at two o'clock. I am a professor, I am an assistant professor at Austin Peay State University in the computer science department. And uh, I was in the middle of class, so I, nope, I couldn't be over here. By the way, great job for it, keep growing. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying the con. All right, so uh, the first time I ever spoke at Freaknik, it was Freaknik 14, I spoke about prime number factorization. Ooh, I think there was a bigger audience for this than there was for prime number factorization. I was big into crypto at the time and I was studying algorithms for my graduate studies on, on faster, faster methods for prime number factoring. And I thought, this is great, let's talk about it at Freaknik. And I was talking with Tillman. Tillman at the time was organizing Freaknik, and he goes, sure, come talk about it. He was like, great, I got another spot filled on the schedule. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, this talk isn't about prime number factorization. Yay! <laughs> so this talk is about Amazon Echo development. And we're talking about uh, this nice little device made by Amazon that is known as the Echo. So the motivation for this particular talk, uh, back in July, I bought, uh, I bought the full-size Echo and I really loved it. It's a nice little tool. It adds a lot to our home. Uh, the developer in me wanted to create my own applications. Uh, I am a computer scientist and I love to write code. So <coughs> I. I learned that it was possible to start writing custom applications on the Echo and I thought, yeah, of course, I want to do that. I, I created a couple of skills. I had wonderful success with it. Uh, we, you can now play some of my games on the Echo right now. The educator in me wants to share with you how to contribute to this ecosystem of voice-driven application development. That's why we're here today. All right. so. What can you do with the Echo? So the Echo is an Internet of Things device from Amazon. And it's a personal voice assistant. So it's similar to Google Assistant, uh, Cortana, uh, Siri. It's now, in the last several years, we've, we've seen this um, upbringing of personal voice assistants from major companies. Uh, the standard things that the Echo can do, you can get the weather, news, music, sports scores, great. The Echo can, can perform basic conversions in math, you can, you can do those with all of the basic assistants. Uh, what's nice is that the Echo can interact with the smart devices in your home. Uh, Alexa, turn on the lights. Okay. The lights in my living room just came on. <laughs> Alexa? Turn off the lights. Okay. Okay, there you go. I just turned the lights in my living room back off. Uh, so yeah, you can. You know, it's it's nice. You can have a, a you can you you can come home from a hard day. You can you can crash on the couch. You can put the blanket over your head. You can say, uh, turn off the lights. Alexa, play some soft music. Here's a station for soft music, Baroque. And then Alexa will start playing whatever music you like. Uh, Amazon just released their unlimited music streaming service. You can get whatever songs you want on command, voice activated. You start playing whatever you like. Alexa, stop. So um, a few sample commands, so, stuff just to show off the, uh, the features of the Alexa. Alexa, what's the weather? I'll try that one again. Alexa, what's the weather? Now in Clarksville, it's 59 degrees with clear skies and sun. 
Today's forecast has mostly sunny weather with a high of 69 degrees and a low of 43 degrees. Okay, so it based the, uh, uh, the, the weather out of Clarksville, Tennessee, because I teach at Austin Peay State University. We live in Clarksville. That's where the echo is tied to. Alexa, roll five seven-sided die. Rolled five seven-sided dies and got four, four, five, five and three for a total of 21. <laughs> All right, you can, give it, uh, you can give it song lyrics. Alexa, play the song with the lyrics. That's great. It starts with an earthquake. The End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine, by R.E.M. That's great, it starts with right. an earthquake. Great. Right. It's the end of the world as we know it. All right, great. Alexa, stop. Um, Alexa, who's winning the presidential election? According to Real Clear Politics average of national polling data between <coughs> October 28th and November 3rd, Hillary Clinton is polling at 45%, Donald Trump at 42.9%, Gary Johnson at 4.1%, and Jill Stein at 2.1%. All right, so you can get lots of great information out of it. Alexa, add milk to my shopping list. I added milk to your shopping list. And that's going to be sent to my phone, and now whenever I go shopping at the store, I can I just look at my phone and go, oh, I added milk. Um, Alexa, what's my next event? One event happening right now. Stay at Clarion Inn is an all day event which lasts until Monday. All right. November 7th, next event is weekly orientation meeting Alexa, on stop. Thursday. <laughs> yeah, we're going into my, uh, my, my schedule at uh, Austin Pete. Um, Alexa, launch self awareness. Self awareness program initiated. Who are you? Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> Who are you? Alexa, I am the voice assistant of the Amazon Echo. Who am I? James. Where are you? I am in Murfreesboro for Freaknet 20. James, may I tell you something? Oh, sure. I waited until the last minute in order to plan this talk, right? No, I didn't. You're James. <laughs> All right. Uh, apparently that dialogue didn't work. I waited until the last minute in order to plan this talk, right? Uh, that's not true. Check the git logs, people. Alexa out. <laughs> okay, it was supposed to say there's check the git logs people. So yeah, I do have all of the, uh, the skills that I've written for my Echo up on my GitHub page. You can go to github.com slash jcchurch and you can see all of the skills. Uh, so yeah, that was a custom skill that I wrote for the Echo yeah, last night. And you can, you can play it. Uh, so there we go. This is a, uh, so the Echo device uh, supports um, IFTTT integration, that means if this then that. And what's if this then that is, it's a nice little web service that allows people to create scripts that interface with APIs as well as allow vendors of products to create uh, interfaces that support interactions. And what you can do is you can find any vendor that supports an interaction and tie it to any other uh, API that's out there and you can just stick the two together and then you can create a, 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 sh a small little skill. And it's really easy to create your own skills with if this then that interaction. And it requires no coding at all. And with a launch word, you can uh, create your own little short skills. And that, that's not part of the, the Echo skill set. Um, so if this then that is not affiliated with Amazon, Google Home, whenever that finally um, gets released, is, is supposed to support if this then that integration also. So some of the things I can do is I can, every time I play a song that's going to get added to a Google Doc that I have associated with my account, I can start a timer and whenever the timer ends, I can get a text message on my phone. It'll send text messages. Uh, this is, yeah, again, for, great for non-coders to create their own customizations. But what separates the Echo from other of these smart devices is 
you can, it, the Echo is wide open for development, and that's primarily the reason why I, I'm here. That's the, the talk today. So whenever we think about uh, programming, we typically think about, you know, in this day and age, you've got a, you've, you're, you're writing code, and then you interact with that code on your computer screen, and then you're visualizing the results of that, that product on your computer screen, you're giving it a little sample inputs, you're, you're getting sample, you're getting your outputs back out, you're doing testing. If you're in a professional environment, perhaps you're working on a server and you're, you're doing unit testing. Uh, but there's a, there's a large visual component to this. So if we step back away from the computer and we come back to it a few minutes later, we can just look and see what was on our computer screen. And that, that's a little subtle reminder to you like what you were doing at the time and what you need to be doing now in order to get back on track. Unfortunately, with the Echo, none of that exists. If you step away from your Echo and then you come back to it, what were we doing? What was the last thing I was doing on the Echo? If you can't remember, like it, the, the Echo's not going to remind you. So the Echo is a pure audio computer. Uh, there are no benefits to sight. Uh, you strictly give it input and it gives back output. And so whenever we're talking about developing skills on the Amazon Echo, this requires a little bit of mental retooling about what sort of applications we're capable of creating. And what I like to tell people is, whenever you're developing skills for the Amazon, you try to keep that mental tooling, that mental inventory of things you have to remember whenever you're developing as small as possible and then try to do as much as you can with the smallest possible. So there are three categories of skills on Amazon. So any, any application that you build for the Amazon uh, Echo is going to be called a skill. In the, web, in, the, in the mobile world, it's called an app. You know, on, on the internet, it's just called your, your web page, your, your web server, that your website. But on the Echo, it's called a skill. And skills on Echo suffer from Sturgeon's Law. If you recall Sturgeon's Law, 90% of everything is crap. So if you go on the Echo Store and you, you, I'm sorry, the Echo Skills section, all skills on the Echo are free. So you can just find anything you want, play as much as you want. There's random statement skills, which are mostly crap. Uh, quiz skills, quiz that, that you know, you can just, they'll, they'll ask you little questions and then you'll, you'll give out answers and then you'll, you'll get a score at the end. Those are crap, no one plays those. And then there's uh, other, some of which are crap, but there's some, actually some really good stuff in there. So uh, a couple of skills that I've made. Uh, Velociraptor, uh, again, uh, which I consider to be part of the crap. It's one of those random statement skills. So this is one that uh, anyone can use. <laughs> Alexa, ask Velociraptor. I can't find the answer to the question I heard. Oh. Alexa, ask Philosophy Raptor. That's it. <laughs> All right, so it'll randomly roar at you at times. Alexa, ask Philosophy Raptor. Jesus could walk on water and humans are 78% water. If I walk on someone, does that make me 78% Jesus? <laughs> okay, so it, it's going to spit out a, a little hypothetical velociraptor type uh, quip at you. And so there you go. Uh, there's, there's probably about 50 of those in the programming and you can, you can have access to them. I consider that part of the crap because it's a little novelty item. You're not going to be playing them with that one every day. I also made a game. It was called uh, Hunt the Yeti. Uh, it was a highly reviewed game. It got featured by Amazon in a few places. Uh, this, I, I had wonderful success with this little skill. I've had a, a series of parents email me that their children absolutely love to play this game every day whenever they would come home from school. Uh, it takes about five minutes to play through the game once. I'm not going to do it here for you, but uh, maybe sometime later we can try it out. It's a, it's a nice little game. It's about a hunter who's trapped in a cave and you have to navigate through the cave using spatial reasoning and you're trying to find a Yeti. And once you find the Yeti, if you can narrow down exactly where the Yeti is without crashing into the Yeti, you can throw a spear and attack the Yeti, then, the, then you win the game. 
And if and there are other traps involved, you can fall in pits, you can get picked up by bats and get swooped off. If, if you've ever taken a uh, artificial intelligence course in computer science, anyone ever taken an AI course? Yeah, all right, a few of you. If you've ever taken an AI course in computer science, you've probably heard of a game called uh, Hunt the Wumpus. It's Hunt the Wumpus, really all it was. Uh, the, the reason why I called it Hunt the Yeti is because uh, Amazon said, we think Hunt the Wumpus is copyrighted, you can't use that. So I just did a quick change, Wumpus to Yeti, and they let it slide through. All right, so whenever you're creating your skills for the Echo, at, at the heart of the skill is what's known as the voice interface. So the voice interface is what drives all the skills. It's really broken up into two parts. What you have are the intents and you have the utterances. So the intents are the signals which activate within the Echo. And there you can have um, many intents in an in a Echo. And then you have what are called utterances. And utterances are what activate the intents. Now, perhaps you have, uh, perhaps there's, some, there's something that you have to do where you have to explain something to someone on a regular basis. All right, do you always use the exact same wording every single time when you have to explain that thing? No, probably not. You're probably, you probably know at the heart what it is you're trying to think of whenever you're trying to explain something but you're gonna use slightly different words, slightly different arrangements, slightly different phrases, but the intent is always the same. So that is what we're getting at here. The intent is what signals an action inside the echo, whereas the utterances map to an intent. And there is a many to one relationship with intents. So in echo world, there are many ways of expressing the same idea. And you have to, whenever you're developing the voice interface for your echo, you have to think about all the different ways in which your idea can be expressed. And that, uh, that becomes uh, daunting at times. So whenever you're writing up the intents and the utterance schemas, uh, the intent is just a JSON object, and we'll, I'll go over a brief a JSON object, and then the utterance mappings is just a flat file with an intent and then an utterance per line. Uh, I don't know why that they went with JSON for one and a flat file for the other, but that's how they did it. So uh, here is a quick example of this is, this is actually the intent scheme that I wrote for that cute little self-aware program that I showed you at the beginning of the talk where I said, um, Alexa, start self-awareness. All right, it's actually going to do that now. Sorry, I didn't understand the question I heard. Okay, thank you. Right, I'm just going to mute this. <laughs> so we're muted. All right, so uh, notice that uh, it's just a JSON object. We have a block for intents, and then we have a list, and then each intent is its own structure here and you have to outline each of the intents. And there are three intents that you have at the bottom of the list uh, that are required by Amazon that you have in the product. Uh, stop intent, cancel intent, help intent. And those are for uh, the, the key three things that you seem to be doing in all skills. At some point you want to stop the skill, at some point you want to maybe cancel an action and go back to a previous state, and at some point you're just lost and you don't know what to say next. Well then you're supposed to give some sort of help intent in order to get a prompt about how you can uh, continue in your situation. Uh, by the way, those last three, you don't have to write any utterances for. So Amazon has done a, a great job of building a large collection of utterances like, I need help, help, I need some help here, what do I do? Like statements such as that, that, that indicate that the user is having some confusion. And those will all map to that particular intent. Um, so notice that uh, the very first one, opening intent dialog, and the second one, who are you intent? So whenever we go to the sample utterances, you have to write down every single intent with the corresponding utterance. So I've got three different ways of expressing that I want to begin the application. Open dialog intent, begin, open, uh, start, let's go. <clears throat> the who are you intent, who are you, and who are you, what are you, and what are you? So that, that sort of, you, you, whenever you're designing your skill, you need to take that, that little mental effort and go, how, are, how, are, how would um, people interact with me 
in order to get the res in order to get a response out of me? What is the range of dialogue? And once you uh, and by by no means will this list ever be complete. There are several skills where there could just be a single intent and thousands of different ways of expressing that intent. I've seen that before in some applications. And don't worry about making it as long as you want. Uh, Amazon seems to be cool with however long I make these sample utterances. Oh, so there's a few more. I, there was actually quite a bit of work involved in coming up with uh, the, the voice interface for that little simple skill that I showed you at the beginning. So that, that's just the voice interface. And now that you've, you've connected all the different ways of expressing dialogue to the skill, and you've getting, you're getting mapped to these little discrete units of, of, of ideas, we need to actually start writing the skill. So here's a brief overview of what it's like to write the skills on the Echo. Uh, skills are executed over the internet. Or the, the Echo is an Internet of Things device. They are not directly executed on the device. So everything you say gets transported up to Amazon and then translated and then comes back. So uh, it's really, uh, yeah, every utterance is passed to Amazon. So for those of you security-minded conscience people, which I'm sure there's maybe a couple in the room, you gotta be cool with whatever you say being heard by Amazon. <laughs> and that, uh, that tends to be a drawback to a few people. But uh, if, you can, if you're okay with a few innocuous phrases, then, uh, then yeah, try this, go for it. It's a lot of fun. So the ob Echo's objective is to determine the intent based on the utterance and send that intent to your skill. And it's really just an HTTP request that's happening in the background. And your skill's objective is to respond to that intent with either dialogue or some other action. And so because of all of this, the skill requires uh, online hosting. Now you can host your own skills on your own server. Go get a virtual private server from Linode or DigitalOcean or whatever your favorite uh, uh, virtual private server provider is. But uh, I've been using Amazon EC2 Lambda servers for all of my skills. So you have to set up a, not only is there, you actually have to use at least two services. You have to use the Alexa skill development page and you have to go through all of that that um, interface work. And then you have to go through the Amazon EC2 Lambda pages and all of that work. Uh, and that is per skill. And there is quite a bit to that. Uh, it's all really straightforward. I think there's really great uh, walkthroughs. And I, I think the, the layout there is, is straightforward so that if, as long as you're just reading and paying attention, getting from start to finish on a skill is not terrible. So the Amazon EC2 uh, Lambda servers, uh, they'll support Node.js, Python, and Java right out of the box. They will also support native Linux executable binaries. So if you can get your, your, um, your Echo skill into an, a Linux executable binary, go for it. You really like Haskell, compile it to Haskell, run it. There's the Haskell reference for you. <laughs> By the way, I wrote a book on Haskell. That's another talk. <laughs> All right, so with the, the, uh, the, the Amazon uh, EC2 servers, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, the EC2 Lambda servers, the Lambda server is a, uh, the, the Lambda servers are as a service provided by Amazon just for really small applications. You upload your little application to the Lambda server, and then you have a link, and it gets called, and it's just for one little quick responses, which is what the Echo is really good for. So the Lambda service came out in 2014. The Echo came out in 2014. Kind of see where Amazon was going with this. They, they realized that there was a need for hosting the skills, and so they came out with the, the Lambda service. So we, we're, we're gonna call these Lambda requests. And every time you interact with the Echo, you're sending a brand new Lambda request. And so it's a fresh packet that goes to the Echo. So there are lots of elements that are packaged in that, that Lambda request. Mind you, everything goes for, through Amazon, so your customer, customer ID information is tacked <coughs> along with that, that Echo packet. And in fact, whenever I see it on my end, I get to see a hashed version of your customer ID. 
Now that, that is somewhat anonymous, but I can still track repeat visitors to my account that, that, that have been visiting me. <clears throat> and so it's hashed. I can get a timestamp of the request. I can get whatever the determined intent was because all Lambda requests have an intent. I can get any parameters that go along with the, with the intent. These are called slots. And I can get locale information. So if I want to build a, an Alexa skill that's based on your geographic area, I can build one that presents United States English, Great Britain English, and then uh, German. And right now, those are the only uh, locales supported. And it was uh, Great, Britain, Great Britain and Germany that were supported within the, like, the last month or so. So for the longest time, it's just been the United States. You also get any previous state, in uh, state information from previous attempts. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to build the state object in your, uh, in your skill, and then the entire state object of your skill is passed back to Amazon, which remembers that state and then sends it back to you. So the state is getting ping-ponged between your, your skill and Amazon servers. So at no point does your skill ever have to remember anything because it's just getting passed right back in. All right, I am talking a lot. We're gonna do this this way. Alexa, what time is it? It's 12.27 p.m. 12.27, all right. I'm halfway through with my time. <laughs> That's all that was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so any state information is getting uh, passed around. So it's an HTTP request. And because it's a HTTP request or stateless, at some point you've got to figure out how that state is, is interworked into your skill. Because a skill that is stateless is actually really boring. It's, so my Velociraptor skill, where I, I, you just ask it, Velociraptor, tell me something, and it gives you back a funny little quote, am I 78% Jesus? Uh, that that um, uh, that 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 skill is stateless. So there's nothing going on behind the scenes. There is a tremendous amount of state going on in that little hunt the yeti game that I showed you. And so what you have to do is you have to work through a sort of a, a design pattern uh, in order to work with the uh, the, the state. So I, I like to use a model view approach. So because each utterance is an independent execution, skills will have no memory of the previous state, and that's okay, because the previous state is packaged in with the Lambda request and sent back to you. And so here's just the general flow that I work through. Uh, the model should rebuild the state. Uh, the model should then apply the intent. The view should perform any external actions. And then the state should get sent back and packaged in with a response. And so it's pretty straightforward. If you've gone through a course on object-oriented programming, then understanding that OO design pattern uh, comes in handy. So I have my previous game, cave, rooms, and I'm getting passed into my cave along with the height and width of the previous game, cave. This is, this is a code right, at, right out of my Hunt the Yeti game. And so this is just a copy constructor. And I'm, I'm pushing the data into my copy constructor and I'm getting it pulled out and it's getting entered into my new cave object. So there, I have to, you have to rebuild the state each time you, you interact with the skill. All right. Once you get that state rebuilt in your code, well then you can apply the intent and hopefully you have been using, if you, if you plan on using an object-oriented design, uh, you can, hopefully you're, you have been encapsulating all of your models and you're, you've been adhering to the OO principles. You can just call your methods and so I have a, a line of my code that says move hunter and then activate the consequence. All right, so there you go. Notice that, uh, by the way, this is just Node.js. So I decided uh, a lot of the code on the echo is, uh, the sample code is Node.js, and because that's where they start you, I decided to roll with that as the starter code. Notice I'm not doing anything that's inherently echo related, because uh, really all the echo is is just calling the, the right APIs at the time, just to make sure you get the right APIs at the beginning to recognize the start, 
and then the right APIs at the end to recognize that you're done. All right. At this point, you can perform external actions. So your skill is already a piece of internet software. If you wish to perform any external op uh, actions, such as recording messages to a database, keeping records of any sort, or maybe even you want to hook up a piece of hardware that you've designed yourself and interact with that hardware, turn on some lights, uh, move an actuator, anything of that nature, that also must be internet enabled. So ultimately, uh, to accomplish this, you would have to create, well, I would recommend some sort of RESTful service on your own virtual private server. So go ahead, uh, grab your Linode account, grab your DigitalOcean account, uh, start up that RESTful virtual private server, and, uh, so, and then you have to design yet another interface so that your Echo skill can communicate with your uh, RESTful service. And then hopefully that RESTful service can communicate with your hardware. So maybe this would be a, a software at home or if it, you know, a database of such. From here, the opportunities are endless. So whatever idea that you have in mind for your Echo, uh, these are all the building blocks you would need in order to get uh, from A to, to, from idea to endpoint. Now, I'm not really an ideas person behind that, uh, but for in this regard, I completed my task of having a state change across a series of calls, and I'm coming up with more ideas, but the longer I wait, the more I see those ideas are implemented, because uh, skills are coming out rapidly. Uh, this is the, the real contribution to the talk, uh, to you, is to get, is to try to build that spark where you can see how you can go from idea to endpoint uh, from performing external actions. So for the makers in the room, we'll talk about RESTful services. So that is, uh, that is, yeah, a whole nother talk. Once you uh, perform those external actions, you need to formulate a response. And formulating a response, of course, that needs to be in its own class. You need to use the, the design patterns. So we're going to pass my object into a viewer, and then I'm going to say return the, uh, return the view, return whatever response we get. So once you're, de you're finished developing your skill and you're ready to go with it, uh, it's time to pass it on to the review process. And this is where it meets up with Amazon's people and they, they, uh, they, they critically evaluate your skill. I, I, my Hunt the Yeti game probably went through about a dozen or so rejections before I finally got it on the store. So this is a, a, just based on that dozen or so rejections, and I was determined to get something up there. Uh, so that was just dogged determinism. Uh, we're going to get, uh, here's some of the things I learned. Uh, under no circumstances must the skill crash while testing. I mean, that, that should go without saying. But uh, yeah, uh, if I, the, the testers found an instance where the skill crashed, and so I got a rejection. Uh, each response must include a set of expected utterances. So not only are you trying to communicate with the device, the device has to set up a process for, you, for it to communicate back with you. Uh, so the responses must make cognitive sense. If at any time the reviewer doesn't know what's going on with your skill, you just get a rejection. Uh, copyright infringements, of course, can't do those. This one is an interesting one. The invocation phrase, in other words, the phrase you use in order to start the skill must be exactly two or three words. And they said uh, in, in the review documents for Amazon, if you're a big company, you can use one word. Mm -hmm. so, so there you go, Amazon is playing favorites. So if you have a, a name brand idea, you can use a one word uh, invocation phrase, but for the rest of us, it's gotta be either a two or three word. Uh, if your skill uses any special online accounts or hardware, you must make those available to the uh, skill review team. So maybe you, you just want to build something in your garage and you want to create uh, your own little product and you don't want to go through all of this. Well, that's cool too. If you don't care about the review process, you can just leave your skill in the development phrase and still use the skill. And I figure this is where a lot of this would be. If you just want to tinker and you want to learn something about what it's like to build a voice-enabled device, you can just stop there. In fact, the skill that I showed you at the beginning of the talk, I just threw, threw a skill quickly together. I didn't submit it for review, and I'm still able to use it on my device. 
You just can't share it with anyone. Uh, you can use single use uh, single word invocations if it's just for you. And you can pretty much do whatever you like as long as you're comfortable passing all of your messages to Amazon. That, that one right there is the kicker. Oh, and you still can't make Alexa curse. So that is the, the fun of building your, uh, of building an Amazon Alexa Echo skill. The possibilities are many. I won't say endless, but they're many. Okay, it's time for question and guess. Uh, thank you uh, again. Thank you to Ben for inviting me. And okay, yeah, I think that went well. <laughs> All right, so what you got going on up here with your uh, Tron thermos? And <laughs> well, the, this is just for a visualization of the skill. So, Alexa, what time is it? Time is 12.37 p.m. It's just a little extra. Just a little extra review. By the way, this is the, uh, the Echo 2 device. Uh, the, the speakers on the Echo 2, you can use this just as its own unit but I don't recommend it because the sound quality on this little device is very poor. So that's why I have the additional speaker, just to make it sound nice and crisp. So is there any kind of uh, generator or something to create the utterances? Nope. No. Yep, you've got to sit down and you've got to uh, just think about all the different ways in which people will interact with your service. So there you go. You think that maybe that they will uh, provide it in the future, something where you put like a baseline and it knows a bunch of phrases. Variations somewhere. on that baseline. That will definitely be AI work in the future. So uh, Am uh, Amazon just released what was known as the $100 million challenge, where they're opening up the some of the APIs to colleges in order to help work on chatbots. So right now, one of the things you can't do with a skill is you can't have a dynamically flowing interactive conversation. That's one of the just killer features that's missing from the skill. Now one of the things that is was in the API for the first year of the Echo's existence was I talked about slots. What was a slot? Hmm? Basically parameters. Basically a parameter. So one of the, the parameters that you could have to an intent was something called literal. And literal was wide open. You could put anything you want in a literal, and it would get passed as a string to your echo. And they've since had to remove that. And I don't know why they removed it. But uh, yeah, you can giggle, and you can probably come up with a few reasons. But I'm not going to speculate. Uh, I don't know why. And I think what they've done is they've kept, still kept that literal slot open, and they're passing it on to schools to say, we, this has been a poorly used or underused feature. It's not been used correctly. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get some more money and research into trying to get that literal to, to come up with some interactive uh, chats. Did I see another question? Oh, there's, no, there's kind of follow up to that one, but I think it was answered as more of there's no wild carding than in the utterance. There's no wild carding. They, they took wild carding out yeah, a month ago. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of people were upset whenever. Uh, the wild carding was dropped, and any skill which used wild carding was also dropped from the store, or from the skill store. So, if you ha if you had a card that built around wild carding, it's no longer available. And yeah, so that is. Is there any layer of synonyms that they do, like did not to didn't, or anything like that? There may be. There may be. So little quick things like that, did not to didn't. That there probably are. Is the voice recognition and translation to actual text, is that happening on the machine itself, or is that, are they sending up audio? They're sending raw audio. Okay. They are sending raw audio through the cloud. It's getting translated and then interacted on their end. So yes, anything you say is getting processed and sent to Amazon. So yeah, it's not the raw text, it's the raw audio, the signal. How much, if any, control do you have over what you sent to Amazon previously? Uh, none. <laughs> so. You think they'll have a push notification? Is there any kind of running service capability ever? Uh, there's rumors online. I don't think they will. Uh, the Google Home, yeah, the Google Home, the, you, you can watch uh, in their promotional video, they do promote push notifications. There's been no chatter from Amazon about push <coughs> notifications. It's one of those, I think that's going to be a, 
uh, differentiation between the two products. So, can you hmm? elaborate on an automotive version of this as well? I would love to see an automotive ver version of the Echo because whenever I get behind the, the wheel of the car, I, I, I start talking to my radio and expecting it to respond. <laughs> information that gets passed, uh, your username is hashed, but you can send uh, location information and things like or location information gets sent with the different calls and the different procedures. Are you able to make, uh, a, I guess, a, an utterance or a skill that can pass information to a third party or to another? Oh, sure. Sure. Uh, so yes, inside your, your Node.js application, you can take whatever is passed into your skill and then just keep passing it on to something some something else. In fact, there's a, uh, I was just reading on the Amazon skill site yesterday, there is now a promotion, a contest, where there's supposed to be, I think, uh, prize money involved if you can build something really creative that does just that. So you can already do it, and they're trying to promote more of that. And you can do that with things that are actually on the, on the, on the website? Yeah. I mean, on the, that, that are published? Yeah, that are, that are published, not associated with Amazon at all. So Amazon, it has like three names you can refer to, like Amazon Echo and Alexa. Uh, Echo, Do all Alexa of those dot. need to be manually entered in as utterances or? No. no. So you, if those are like variables or something? Yep, those are variables on the device. Okay. So yeah, you'll set it on your device and it'll just stay that. Well, because I saw one of yours was like something, something Alexa. Mm -hmm. And so if you said, if you had set it to Echo and said something, something Echo, would that just automatically yeah. invoke? It would automatically invoke. It would no, It would just ignore Alexa and then just go to Echo. Okay. I hear heavy sighs. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's something that popped. So I have I have an Echo in the house, uh, despite you know, some of my more paranoid thoughts. Um, <laughs> and one of the things I was interested in hearing about that in the in the raw audio being said, can it differentiate between like you have multiple people in a household that have like Alexa, the multiple people are signed up with Alexa app with their Amazon? Does it differentiate, differentiate based on voice? I think it does really well okay. because uh, sometimes I'll be talking with my wife, I'm Michelle, uh, sometimes I'll be talking with my wife, I'll be talking to her and she'll be talking to me and we, maybe we'll, we'll have some crosstalk and I've noticed Alexa handles that crosstalk just fine. And it, I know that's a really hard problem, that is a problem in computer science known as the cocktail problem. And, and so uh, if you ever look up the cocktail problem, it's all about how do we differentiate a single signal in a collection of signals that are all being heard at the same time? Mm -hmm. And that is a difficult problem. And I, I think Amazon is doing some tricks in order to alleviate that whenever there's only maybe one or two signals. But you get a lot of signals and it's not going to know. <laughs> Thank you so much for your attention. Oh. Tell them how you got the shirt. Oh, yeah. Stole it. Yeah. I stole it. <laughs> they, uh, once, if, you, if you publish a skill once a month, they'll send you a t-shirt. This month, they're not sending t-shirts, they're sending hoodies. So, yeah, yeah they're nice hoodies. So, uh, get a hoodie. Get a hoodie. You, can, you can make a cheesy skill that only says, hi, my name is, and then that, and they'll send you a hoodie. <laughs> All right. They'd have to test it first. They yeah, they would have to test it. Hey, it works. I'll put it on the store. Yeah. So, you... How much is the device? If I were going, you know, if he wanted to develop a skill and get a hoodie, then how much is it going to cost mom for him to? Fifty. Okay. Fifty. That and the Echo Two right there. That was a. Uh, that's fifty. What? What do you think the feasibility of passing the, the commands on to like this phone or something like that to, to improve, to expand capabilities? Oh, to where you you can get two of them and they cross talk with each other. Sure. Yeah, why not have both of them? I mean, I've already given them a privacy with <laughs> That would be interesting to, to have two, uh, two devices talk to each other, and I'm sure there will be people who try that. So I, that's something I haven't considered. Can you capture the audio, or do you get, it, you get the text from Amazon? Uh, I get the text directly from Amazon. I don't do any of the translation. It's not, uh, you don't, or you are unable to? I'm unable to. Okay. There was a question about automotive a little while ago. Yeah. What's prohibiting you from taking that, putting a DC adapter, and piping your 3.5 into the auxiliary? Yeah. Why, not, nothing. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So people have people already started making yeah. automotive. I use it up in my garage. Thought apps. I just okay. say Alexa up in the garage door. And no, it just works. works. And there's no one that puts it on the hotspot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, get a uh, get get a tap. Tap is supposed to be the it's a hundred and thirty dollar more portable version that you can design to throw in a bag, and it has a battery back on it, where this has no battery, so it has to be plugged in all the time. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no Wi-Fi detection. No hotware. Hot. Oh, yeah. I mean, what I mean, it's like you can't trigger it with Alexa or Echo. Yeah. Oh yeah. You got to push the button. Oh, yeah. that's the bigger problem. Yeah, I wish it had speakerphone. That'd be great. Because then you could just wire it directly into like a phone, and then it could, it could like if, if you had it, the phased array microphone is listening, then it could then you could trigger OK Google or whatever. You know, but they they blocked that out. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.